architect of the X-Men universe. And in many ways, this isn't new news, but what is new is that the use of the word architect is actually what we think of as what the word architect means. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, Marvel, uh, all comic companies, but Marvel especially loves to uh, throw around these terms like this guy's an architect. And, you know, it, that you don't really know what that that entails. And what it kind of entails is, well, it's this, you know, celebrity kind of higher profile person who's going to read a couple scripts. But by issue six or nine or whatever, we'll be we'll be gone now the picture. Uh, that's not the case this time. In this case, we get actually Hickman is going to be kind of. Forging ahead with a hard reset uh, here in July. Uh, July question mark? I believe July. And Ickman is going to not only write uh, the two series that will be kind of the core anchor focal points of this reset, uh, what what's being billed as the most important X-Men story in more than a decade. And then after that, there will be a large number of phase one and phase two uh, comics that will come out. And Hickman is uh, architecting these, is going to kind of set the tone and the pace and make the decisions on these and what they are ultimately going to be. In addition to that, he's going to write the core flagship uh, X-Men title himself. And this is not unlike uh, what he did with Avengers, where he wrote the core book. He wrote uh, New Avengers. He had some other people kind of come in and help. And then eventually kind of it, he... He, uh, he was kind of masterminding the whole kind of race to secret war. And so we're getting another another uh, similar kind of feel to that. What we haven't been given <clears throat> is a timeline. We don't know how long he's going to be doing this. We don't know, is it going to be a year, five years? You know, what is the plan? Um, Hickman doesn't seem to get out of bed for anything less than three years of a plan. And so I, I want to believe that's uh, that's how long it's going to take. Uh, what's interesting is we haven't had any artists announced. Uh, Marvel had, had gone the way of the writer uh, for a bit of time. And then over the last, I'd say, five to about five years, they have promoted the artist more, kind of like they used to. But it was uh, it was always kind of a bait and switch kind of artist promotion and that they promote an artist. But that was the artist that was only going to be there for the first three issues or so. Or sometimes just the first issue, and then it would, you know, they say, well, we'll have a rotating cast of artists, uh, but but the rotation doesn't ever seem to come back to the, the main artist <laughs> or the celebrity artist they, they build with eventually. So we haven't heard an artist team at all. We haven't heard uh, what other titles or what other writers are coming out of this. Uh, the, the message is that we're going to hear that come Comic-Con, which is really holding the, cl- the cards really close to the vest. That's... Uh, that's impressive. I'll be very surprised if things don't leak out before then um, on either the artist front or what some of these other titles are going to be front. Uh, I know it is is way too much to hope for, and we kind of already have our answer, but I, I still hold out some minor little hope that Chris Claremont is going to be the other big X writer alongside Hickman. I mean, if you could have uh, man, I wonder if this rain, this is some heavy rain right now. I wonder if that's coming through. Hopefully not. Um, Anyway, I, I think if we can have a Hickman and Claremont team on the X-Men books, I mean, good Lord, that's going to be the renaissance that we've been waiting for. Uh, that's going to be th- – that. that's where you get a better shot, I think, at the million copies sold. Uh, but, you know, we're at least getting those two. Uh, I would love to see – I mean, you know, now's the time to dig deep and grab John Byrne, who has expressed – constant interest in writing or uh, in drawing, I should say, uh, an X-Men book, so, you know, of late, you know, quite a bit of interest. So he's, he's there, he's willing, you got to cough up the cash, but I mean, do it. You will make that cash. If you, if you had two kind of big X-Men books, one written by Hickman with uh, uh, Nick Dragota, I think would be just bring the East and West team in. And the other being Claremont Burn reunion. I mean, God, you you blow up the shelves. You will you will never uh, abandon that. But I, in my mind, at least, what a lot of this signifies, and what the move here really is, is that the X Men are going to be part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe uh, soon. Uh, it's it's they're gonna. Um, my bet is we'll see Dark Phoenix come out, and then you'll see them take a big breather of 
I don't know, anywhere from three to five years before we get an actual Disney produced MCU X-Men movie. Probably some teases along the way. And I think what, what my belief, at least what is in mind from the comic crew, and who knows if this is what the MCU has in mind, but I think there is at least some, I don't want to say crossover, but uh, from everything I've read and seen, uh, I'd, I'd read that Hickman was, you know, not in bad graces with the uh, films part of the division, that they, they liked his ideas, they liked his storytelling, they thought it was both cinematic and also kind of lent itself to movies. And as you see kind of the Avengers and uh, the Black Order and some of the other elements they took from Thanos uh, and how Hickman wrote him and how the Avengers kind of came together, uh, there was a lot of Hickman influence. A lot, you know, many people point to other influences, but but I think if there was one writer that did have a lot of those ideas in the in the current era, make their way onto the screen, I think it, a lot more of Hickman went there than say uh, Bendis or you know some of the other folks who have written uh, an Avengers related book, uh, Remender or or any of the other people who have kind of come in. I think that uh, Hickman had had more of an influence. So my belief is that as as Marvel starts to look to, you know, bring the X-Men to life uh, on the screen, I think that there is a desire to bring in the architect, i.e. Hickman, to put some ideas out that can be adopted. And I think we'll we'll be able to tell really quickly if that hunch is true or not based on, um, you know, kind of the, the first couple issues of the limited series that Hickman's doing. If those first couple issues... Uh, really speak to kind of more movie concepts, then I think you'll absolutely see it come to pass. Um, and I think that that's what, what we're going to get. So there you have it. That is um, what I believe is going to happen. And that's what we're going to see. Uh, but I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for Hickman uh, joining the, the team. I I was hoping that uh, he wouldn't be done at Marvel. I was hoping that uh, he is a guy who comes in and I think fixes things. So I'm looking forward to him him joining. And I think it, he brings a lot of interesting elements to the table. I think in many ways, Hickman's kind of writing style and his kind of uh, more, not mature, but more, he writes at a more adult level, if you will. He does not go for the kind of snarky silliness that uh, that other writers bring. He brings more more seriousness to the table. And I think if there's any title that really deserves or demands seriousness, I think it is it is X-Men. I think that as a line, historically, if you look at, at when it was successful under Claremont and all the years that X-Men was, was really one of the strongest titles Marvel produced, it the tone of the series was serious. They didn't they didn't joke around. Uh, they didn't you know, quip it up. If that's a if that's an expression, and I think if you looked at when Joss Whedon did his astonishing X Men run, um, you know a lot of people liked that run. It, it didn't help when you had John Cassidy or didn't hurt. Sorry, I should say when you had Cassidy doing the art, you had a very streamlined, very tight run, and it worked. And I think uh, whether you're a fan of Joss Whedon or not, uh, Joss Whedon at least knows how to make that dialogue and his style work. I think we've seen a lot of pale imitations of Joss Whedon that don't work, that have been either you know painful at best, or just just kind of it doesn't it doesn't land right. So if you're going to do Joss Whedon humor, I think you got to hire Joss Whedon, and if you don't have him, then you should be hiring writers who have their own voice. And Hickman has his own voice, and he he will come at it from a mature standpoint. Now, I mentioned this on Twitter, and a couple people came in and said, you know what, we've been burned by Marvel. And, and granted, this is a burn, because Marvel, less than a year ago, in October to be precise, uh, they relaunched X-Men. And they said, this is it, you know, new team, new focus. Yes, we are taking Uncanny X-Men seriously. Uh, this is what it's going to be. And they, they kind of said, you know, we're doing something serious. And then... You know, here we are nine months later, and it's like, oh, we're going to reset, reboot everything. We went for a very shortened X-Men run that kind of was a very clumsy, convoluted way to get to Age of X-Men, where X-Men was a villain. This weird kind of new horseman, uh, just 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 weird. I think that, that's the only way you can describe it. Was, it was not a good series. It was a lot of kind of dopey, high-concept um, 
I think so is probably the best way to put it. Uh, it was, you know, they're trying to go from some nostalgia, but all it did was remind people how much better it used to be. And the X-Men line, by, by the time it hit the end of the year, it already felt way off track, just kind of two to three months in. And then we got this Age of X-Men, uh, you know, mini event, which has not been good. Uh, by, by There's been some decent, I think, uh, Seeley's uh, title is probably the best of the bunch. I, I think he did a, you know, a reasonably good job. Uh, it felt unique. I think it, it felt, you may hate it, but it felt unique. Where the rest just felt watered down or just plain weird. The uh, exter- you know, externals, extremists, extremis, I think. That title is bizarre. I mean, it's hard to tell what what is going on there. Um, and so, you know, you have a you've had a very weird run. And so I think definitely Hickman coming in to me is great news. I think you'll bring kind of that Claremont gravitas to this table. But I hear you for people who feel like you just burned me. You're not getting me again. Yeah, I get it. Because these issues, I mean, you can have this limited series guaranteed that's coming in a dollar higher. It's going to come in four ninety nine. Uh, for each issue. And then you're going to have a relaunch of Uncanny X-Men or whatever they're going to call it, uh, number one. And that's going to be uh, you know, nine ninety nine, And you're going to have all these new number ones that are all going to be overpriced. So I, I, I totally get it. Why, as a fan, you might be saying, you know what, screw you. You got me once, you're not getting me again. And I, I can respect that. I think it is going to be a good story. I think it is, uh, at some point, I think somebody at Marvel has to be pulled to the table and say, you know, look, you, it didn't lie exactly, but you, you pretty much lied to the fan base by saying, we're relaunching this. This is it. This is the X-Men event you really want to get on. And then nine months later, you're relaunching. And now the same writers say, well, we always knew this would be a short term thing. Okay. If you always knew it, then you should not have piled ahead with a weekly book for a while, with a you know two nine ninety nine kind of expensive issues of this huge kind of a bunch of limited series and things for Age of X Men. I mean, you went all in on all this stuff, and the message to the consumer race was absolutely not, "Hey, this is a stopgap until we get to the writer you're really looking forward to." I, I actually I actually think it would have sold better if Marvel had said. You know, this, 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 we're going to do kind of nine months of some rapid fire kind of chaos writing stuff that's going to happen here. And then uh, Hickman's coming on board. I think that would have generated excitement. I do not think at all. I don't, I do not believe that would have scared people away. Um, I, I get why they didn't do that. They didn't do that because they thought, well, if we say that, then people will consider the next nine months missable and they won't read. And I think if you're faced with a decision like that, if you're faced with a decision of, of, um, you know, I, I don't want to say anything because if I do say, if I say it's a limited series or I say this is a temporary plan, then people just won't buy the issue because, you know, they won't think, you know, it's worth their time. Hey, the best way to make it worth people's time, tell a good story, get good art, put your best foot forward. If, if you have a crap story or if you have something you have no confidence in, then that's that doesn't matter how you're framing it. It's it's not a good book. You shouldn't try and trick people into buying it anyway because they think it's the main series and collectors are not going to want to miss it. Just be open with where you're at. Be open with a uh, hey, we have this huge mega event in the summer. It's really something cool. You're gonna you're gonna love it. You're gonna you know you you know Hickman. He's gonna do amazing things, and we're gonna tell the last X Man story or the last you know whatever. Just, you can you can bill it any way you want. You can have all your issues, but to do it otherwise, I think is a big mistake. But uh, but anyway, if that's you, um, I get it. I would I would still try and pick it up if you can. I think it is going to be a pretty pretty cool thing. Uh, sight unseen, so I may be completely wrong, but I think the fondest memories I have, and most of us have, are the X Men, are when they were in full on world building mode. Uh, Chris Claremont, intricate plots and lots of things going on. And that's what we're going to get from Hickman. Unless Hickman comes in and and is a completely different writer than anything he's done before, uh, we're going to get that kind of dense, complex story. And I think that's something to be excited about. Anyway, what do you think? Uh, Leave me a comment. Let me know what you feel. Are you skipping it? Is is it enough enough for you? I get it. Um, 
like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Make sure you're still subscribed and follow me on social media at Comic Perch. And thanks for listening.